A very good evening to you. Thanks for joining us on the Thursday edition of the show. I'm Yemi Adebayo. Of course, we'll continue tonight with a post-mortem of the Betsy Obasaki Women's Football Tournament. A winner has emerged. We will talk about it on the show. We'll talk about the Nigeria Professional Football League. We'll talk about the Carabao Cup in England. How the mighty have fallen. We'll talk about all of that as we move on uh, on the show. We'll also uh, talk about the victorious return of the Springboks, the most successful rugby playing nation, that's South Africa now, and the Springbok, the most successful rugby team in the world. We'll talk about all of that and all that has been happening. So I urge you to sit back and relax, even as we take you through all the amazing things happening in your fast space, money spinning world of sports. It's a two-man show. Uh, my colleague, Austin Okon Ackman, is ready, and we're taking this trip together. Uh, greetings to you, Austin. Another good day to talk sports. What's well, a great sense to you, Yemi. Yes, indeed. A fantastic day to talk sports. So much going down in our world of sports. And you know, what a star in the AFL Cup, you know. I, we, we call it the Upset Cup. So, so much has really happened. And we'll talk about it on the show tonight. I'm sure at Do Queens, they will now said to themselves that they have given a good gift to the people of the state, particularly the First Lady, uh, Excellency Betsy Obaseki, by winning uh, the women's football tournament in Edo State. Because, I mean, that's their whole state, you know, and they've not, win they've not been winning it in, the, in previous editions, and it's good to see them doing that now uh, with, the, with the Betsy Obaseki, Obaseki women's football tournament. Uh, we will not stop celebrating South Africa's spring box, what a story, you know, putting Africa out there, telling the world a beautiful story of how impossible is nothing, that when you believe in yourself, you can go out there and do the unthinkable, record-breaking performance by South Africa. They are the first team to have won the Rugby World Cup for a record first time, and they deserve all of the accolades that they seem to be getting at the moment. So much to talk about. Finally, in the Nigeria Premier Football League, that's a win for Aqua United. I can't wait here, me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure you can wait. All right. Uh, let's quickly really introduce to you our partner in the Lagos uh, studio. Okweyemi Akiode joins us this lovely Thursday evening. Okweyemi, greetings to you. Thanks for finding out time uh, to be with us on the show. Uh, thank you, Yemi. I mean, thank you, Austin. I saw the way Austin just came in. You would always know the difference between uh, someone coming from, you know, where the pounds are flying and uh, where we're putting things up here. Yeah. Uh, good to be with you again, Austin. Uh, Yemi, thank you for having me tonight. All right, uh, it's a pleasure. Um, so, well, let me do this in, in 30 seconds if you can. What, what caught your attention this week, sports-wise? Uh, a lot. I think it has to be big for the Super Falcons. Uh, the fact that they went to Ethiopia to get a one all draw and then they finally got the job done in Nigeria for goes to nothing. And one of my favorites for Falcons player, Arashida Tajiba, they also putting in a massive, massive shift there. So I think whatever I had to catch my attention had to be about the growth and development of football in Nigeria. All right. All right. And that's a good place to start. We'll start with the Betsy Obasaki Women's Football Tournament. Austin touched up upon it. We have a winner at Oak Queens, <laughs> like you said, <laughs> making the state proud. Mm. And they were able uh, to uh, do that. And, you know, uh, let's just quickly what pictures on your screen. Uh, First, maybe I should ask if, if uh, okay, I think we'll do it. We'll do it this way. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll see we'll see a report put together on the tournament shortly after Okwemi gives us uh, shares his thoughts with us. This tournament, the whole package, continuity and everything, and you know, topping it up with Edoku is winning. Your thoughts? Um, I've always felt that uh, the potentials that we have in female football. It's not something we even looked into. I think beyond the Nigerian Women Football League, I'm not sure we do a lot in respect to developing female football in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. The potential is enormous. enormous. I've been privileged enough uh, to watch some female grassroots football. And I'm always like, how did we keep having to recycle the same set of players for the Super Falcons? And we've dominated the continent so well that we don't even know that a lot of other countries are catching up with us. I mean, look at the last set of AFCON, look at the performances, look at, you know, you look at the Bayana Bayana, for instance, I mean, you look at what Desirelis is doing with that team, amazing set of players. You look at Morocco, for instance, they're also pushing some real heavy opportunities. So, uh, I followed the, uh, the Betsy Obaseki football uh, tournament, and um, 
I think the bigger part of me is that I saw the closing ceremony yesterday, colorful, something you'd expect from a competition held in Edo State, all of the colors, you know, the mm -hmm. old pre-tournament, mm -hmm. and the game itself lived up to his billing. I, I think um, when you have tournaments like this, or competitions like this, beyond having the winner, there has to be some form of consistency. Again, you ask, what do you want to do with the winner? Is it going to be a one-off thing? Is there a developmental policy that has been put in place? Is it going to be adopted at the end of the day? Or the moment the host is not interested again, is a competition that will die off? I think these are the things we need to the put questions. in place. We have a lot of potentials to get the very best, hear me. But one of our problems is that we don't have this continuity. We don't have backup plans for some of these tournaments. It comes in once, it becomes really successful. A lot of people are expecting it for the next year. It doesn't come up again. All right, all right. Um, although, in, in, in all fairness, and, and I'm very sure Poemi acknowledges as well, this condition has been on, but there's the fear that, okay, if, At if, the, end of <laughs> if, if the originator, uh, I mean, leaves, what, what happens? Mm. Well, uh, Austin has a thing or two to say before we take a look at that, that, that report. I mean, culture put on display, the backing, playing under the lights, a, a lot of a lot of positives, a lot of positives, uh, and I'm yet to see any negative. Mm. The only question would be what happens next, which Okoye Mia said. What's next? What's next? I, I think the NFF is better suited to answer that, though. Uh, well, I think um, it doesn't, this doesn't sit on the table of the NFF. What the NFF needs to do is ensure that uh, they try to en encourage this sort of you know, programs with different states. Uh, at those stage should do everything, I repeat again, everything to sustain this competition. It might, the name might change if Betsy Obaseki uh, leaves office, um, not being the first lady of Edo State anymore. But the next first lady should work with her. This is the third edition, and you can see the joy. You see the way she ran. She was happy that Edo Queens finally get to win it. Last year, it was very disappointing for them. They got to the final and lost to FC Robo Queens. And now on home so finally they did it with the third edition. And this women's football tournament doesn't just bring girls to play football. It's got so much tied around it. Last year, they used it to promote the cause against the use of um, drug abuse. And um, this year, I'm sure that's another thing that, is, that resonates so well with the girl child. It tells you that when we plant sports and combine it with good causes, promote the sustainable millennium development goals, we can actually do more for women's football in Nigeria. You guys have talked about how colorful it is. I keep, when I was in Lagos, I'm covering women's sports. When I get to the venue, I ask the organizers, like, I can't feel it. Is it because it's women's sports? But with this Betsy Obaseke football tournament, they keep getting better and better. They do the unveiling of the mascots. They carry the media along. The prize money isn't bad. There's huge participation. The people come out to watch. Good, good, good for women's football development in Nigeria. Take a bow. Betsy Obaseke and everyone involved with this one in Edo State, you finally have your trophy. Let's take a look at this report. And I'll come back. We'll talk some more. Stay with us. It is the final of the third edition of the Betsy Obaseki Women's Football Tournament at the Samuel Ogbemudia Stadium in Benin City. Before the title deciding match, the initiator of the tournament for women teams in the country, Betsy Obaseki, files out with a giant trophy. This year's tournament showcases our fight against gender-based violence. As a tradition, every year with the tournament, we seek to address, vigorously address, a social vice. The first time, it was a fight to get education and empowerment across to our young girls across the country. The second time, it was a fight against drug abuse. And this year, we are fighting against gender-based violence. 
it's action time. And this year's final is between Edo Queens and Bielsa Queens. By Tim Vienna. Now will have been a goal. Within 24 minutes of play, Mercia Deremi takes the lead for Bielsa Queens. Goal number one. Eunice Godwin levels for Edo Queens on the 41st minute. The women's football. With both sides unable to break the deadlock, at 1-0 in 90 minutes, the game heads straight to penalties, with the Edo Queens winning it 5 million naira. Stand up for the champions, for the champions, stand up. Beautiful scenes right there in Benin City. So uh, there you have it, Edo Queens, they are the champions of the Bed Sea of Basaki Women's Football Tournament, the third edition. And you listen to the vision as they're saying, uh, this year's Football tournament is used to pr to fight against gender-based violence. You see, it's so good, Okoyemi, when people come together and see ways that they can tie programs using sports to promote it. I love it so much. Uh, yeah, um, he just gives you that balance. I mean, it's, it's always okay when it is theme-driven. Uh, if it's not a uh, fight against uh, drug abuse, gender-based violence... Uh, it's about, you know, uh, maybe mutilation, yeah, for instance. Exactly. What's happening in our society. So it, it, it makes a lot of sense here. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you are able to put sports into the reality of the society, mm -hmm. gender-based violence is something that a lot of people are dealing with. Mm -hmm. Domestic violence is something that a lot of people are dealing sure. with. Drug abuse is something that a lot of people are dealing with. So if you have a competition that is putting a lot of people together, is getting the attention of the world, you should always put something in so that as they're passing the message of sports, people also learn that, oh, there's something about gender-based violence, oh, there's something about drug abuse. So, mm -hmm. a lot of, see, I'm totally, totally excited about this tournament. My only fear, like I said earlier on, is that would this go with the, uh, with the person that is sponsoring, you're talking about the first lady of the state. If this could be institutionalized, let them know that for every year, there's a, they could change the name. Just take away the nomenclature, just put it something so that every year... Don't throw the baby knows. away with the bad water. Just water, in, in, in any shape or form, just keep, keep this. Mm -hmm. I hope, I hope Edo State does that, whatever happens. Let's quickly... Uh, we've, we've told you about the teams, the team that won, but let's go to the screen and show you about the third place and, uh, of course, the final uh, confirmation of uh, the result. Betsy Basaki football, Women's Football Tournament uh, and the final you saw uh, on, on your screen. Um, of course, Edo Queens winning finally 4-3 on penalties. Game ended 1-1 in regulation time. The third place, Delta Queens, uh, up against Remo Stars ladies. Uh, I mean, this is another beautiful story. We can go on and on talking about Remo, how, how they're trying to have a sports club, which is very interesting. So uh, they won this 3-1, and that's the uh, third place. All right. Okay. So, uh, so we're done with that, but we're going to stay uh, with the ladies now. Let's talk about the Super Falcons and give you, uh, of course, uh, a notification of what is going to happen. Paris 2024 qualifier is what we're going to talk about. They are around the corner. The final bend is where uh, they are up against. Now, let's give you the fixtures so that you know uh, what we are up against. It's not only going to be Nigeria that will be in action. I'm very sure Kweemi will, uh, of course, we have special focus on Nigeria. And the Lionesses uh, will be up against the Super Falcons of Nigeria, Lionesses of Cameroon. Uh, Ghana will be up against Zambia, Tunisia up against Morocco, Tanzania up against 
South Africa. And just a notification for you that the third round of this playoffs will take place from uh, between the 19th to uh, the 28th of February 2024. So we know the teams, the hurdle we have to cross to get to the Nations Cup. Uh, before I get back to Austin, let me quickly. Nice Cameroon. You have to really look over your shoulder. Ah uh, yeah, uh, like I said, uh, gone are those days where the Super Falcons can just go to bed and Beat they're anybody. so assured that they can take anyone. I mean, sometimes you watch the Super Falcons play off then, and you think they can even beat some male national teams mm -hmm. on the continent. But hey, it looks like we're sleeping. It looks like we'll get carried away with the old glory. Uh, we've won the half. The uh, women have gone back to back like eight times unchecked. But hey, <laughs> it looks like the smaller teams in quotes are doing what we used to do and they're catching up with us and we're not doing what we used to do before. We're not looking at the grassroots development. We're not looking at how we can get better players, bigger teams, so that we can balance things up. We play against the Lioness of Cameroon. They're obviously not pushovers. Mm -hmm. I mean, they also won their last opponent before they got to this stage. But, I mean, <laughs> it's the Super Falcons. You know what I mean? We know that the other teams are coming up, but on their day, the Super Falcons were obviously the biggest Women footballing nation in Africa. We've got the biggest stars. I mean, playing for Barcelona, playing for Atletico Femina, playing in Russia. I mean, there was a time as that Shola played in Liverpool and Arsenal the same season. Before she moved to China, she came back to Spain. So we've got that. I'm not trying to be too comfortable, but I think it's both our to get the job done and pick the ticket to the yeah. Olympics. If, if qualification is the only thing we are talking about, no problem. No problem. But if we're looking at the overall picture, developing the game, mm. we need to be worried. I'm very sure Austin agrees. We need to be worried. I mean, particularly when the Super Falcons have missed out, out of the last two editions mm -hmm. of the Olympics. Okay, I mean, so slow down. The optimism is good. <laughs> I like that you're supporting the Super Falcons. But there's so much to be worried about because... This isn't the Africa Women's Cup of Nations. Mm -hmm. This isn't um, qualifier for the Africa Women's Cup of Nations. This is the Olympics. Mm -hmm. And in the last two editions, the Super Falcons, they've bottled the chance to be at the Olympics. And now, I like that people are celebrating them. Yes, it's good. That's our own way of supporting the team. But what is the NFL doing? For instance, no one is talking about that first leg in Ethiopia. Yes, officiating problems here and there, but the result is the result. They couldn't beat Ethiopia. It ended 1-1. How did they prepare before going to Ethiopia? It was abysmal preparation. It's nothing to write about for professionals. And it could, you could see it clearly. In Abuja, they had no choice than to beat Ethiopia. Now they're going to play Cameroon. Cameroon is not, there are no small babes in women's football in Africa. The lionesses, they've been up there trying to flex their muscles and prove a point, particularly when it comes to their West African rivals, the Super Falcons of Nigeria. Now, Cameroon, in their last match, they lost 2 0 in the first leg in Kampala against Uganda. Mm -hmm. In the second leg, they overturned that. They won 3 0. Now, that's how to get ready for Nigeria. That's the momentum they would want to sustain. And I want to say to the NFF, whatever you need to do to keep the Super Falcons in check now to ensure that everything is fine before they play these qualifiers, because I hate it when the Super Falcons now don't do what they need to do, then people will start blaming them and saying this and that and that and this. But what have you done administratively? We're still asking questions. We're still saying, who is the coach of the Super Falcons? What's going on with the contract of Coach Randy Wardrum? So much questions here and there, the level of preparation. So with Cameroon, it's going to be tough. I'm sorry, uh, my optimism is not as strong as yours. I want to see proper results, particularly against strong teams. And the lionesses of Cameroon, they pose a big, big threat because Cameroon will do everything that they can to see how they can stop Nigeria because Nigeria is the model right now for women's football. Mm -hmm. If you want to be respected in women's football in Africa, you need to beat Nigeria. You need to be able to beat South Africa. You need to be able to beat Morocco, you know, and even Zambia. And if you see the list of teams that have made it to the final round of the qualifiers, those, thing, those teams are there. So it means they are doing their part to stay relevant. They're doing what they need to do to be consistent with victories. Nigeria must wake up. Talent isn't enough. 
It's a mixture of administration, logistics, welfare, infrastructure. It's 360 degrees branding. That's it. Let's go on this quick break. Now, when we come back, there's still so much more to talk about. Don't go anywhere. Stay. Welcome back, Sports Tonight on Channels Television. Just before we went on that break, we we're talking about the final qualifying rounds for the Olympics qualifiers. The Super Focus of Nigeria have been drawn against the Lionesses of Cameroon, Okoyemi, Akio Days in the studio in Lagos with my colleague, Yemi Adebayo. He is super duper confident that, oh, it's the Super Falcons. They're right. They will do what they need to do. And I said, calm down. Calm mm. down. This is the Olympics qualifiers. There's so much work to be done if Nigeria wants to pick a ticket to Paris 2024. Yemi, yeah, I'm sure you agree with me. 100%. 100%. Uh, but, but for balance, uh, Okwemi also agrees. If we're talking about qualifying, I don't think... My optimism may not be as high as it is, but I'll still be optimistic. But we should be worried that we're not doing the right things. We should also be worried that the guys in charge of football now, without no disrespect intended are just content with doing whatever they want to do with national teams. No attempt to structure the game, no attempt to develop whatsoever. Maybe I don't know. Maybe they're doing things I don't know. And we had an ex-international with us the other time, and he told us, a lot is happening at the grassroots. It's just that we're not harnessing it. We're not... A lot is happening. You see... I mean, just go to those big stadiums. You see you have female teams. You have, you know, all this... All what they're doing at the grassroots, they're just crying out for structure crying out for organization and you know tiny drops of water would make an ocean if we begin to unnest begin to put the right structures uh in, in place and whether we like it or not this crop of players that we have will leave the scene one day then you now go back to what have you been doing all this while you, you, we can force our way you know to qualify but and of course, we also know when you get to the international stage as it's well. It's a different ball. It's, it's yeah. also a different ball. You, you can't build something on nothing. Yeah. If you fail to develop the potentials that you have, the superstars that you're celebrating at the moment, they would age. It's a natural circle. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't have Azizah Toshola forever. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't have Rashida Tajibadi forever. Mm -hmm. I mean, Desiree Akparanozi is out of the team already. So you're not going to have the set of people forever. How much have you prepared to have the next set that would graduate to become the next face of the Super Falcons? The same applied to the Super Eagles. I mean, you look at the Super Eagles, once there's any international, you can predict the same set of players that have been invited to the national team. You hear me? All right. All right. Just to ensure the production line is intact. You can have problems, but ensure the production line is intact. Let's switch gears now. Nigeria Professional Football League. Let's take a look at the results. Okwemi will take us through the stories. Midweek, um, March Day 6 results from the midweek. Lobby Stars defeated the Nuku Rangers 2-1. Uh, well, Aqua United finally, um, for some time, got their victory. 1-0 mm. victory over Gomba United. Heartland played a 1-0 draw with uh, Rivers United. Kano Pillars. I mean, they weren't going to lose what happened to them the last time out. And defeated by Ossie United 3 0. Quara United uh, beat Sporting Lagos 2 1. These are the results. And some also played today. Niger Tornadoes, of course, all a draw with Ayimba. Plateau United uh, had a slim one in Victor Vacasina United. Remo Stars beat Shooting Stars 3 0 in the Southwest Derby. And Sunshine Stars, um, of course, uh, squeezed past Abia Warriors 2 1. Um, if you don't wait, press for time, but let me yield to Austin first. Any, any surprises with the results on the screen? Um, no, no, no surprises that much, but I think uh, Aimba did just enough not to lose at Niger Tornadoes to keep relevance. Uh, in their campaign, which is good enough. Rivers United also. This is the Nigeria Premier Football League. When you go away from home and pick points, you're doing so good for uh, for your league season. Um, I think Quara United, yeah, that should be the surprise because Remo Stars, they are not a team that you just get up and beat, you know, Sporting Lagos, I, I meant to say. They're not just a team. They have the momentum. They have good support. Management is doing well in terms of welfare and taking care of the players. So, Quara United, after losing their last game, needed to get back to reckoning, and they did just start by you know winning that one by two goals to one. Um, Lobby Stars and Enugu Rangers, you know, I, I was following that game, and I thought Lobby Stars did just enough. 
uh, to secure that win. And that's a very good one uh, for Luby also. And Aqua United, finally a win uh, after six matches in the league. And hopefully, they will find a way now to get into the league proper. Uh, Kufre Ebong's goal in the 35th minute, low cross, he tucked it in. And Aqua United just had to find every way to secure that goal. Not the best performance uh, you, that I've seen of the promised keepers uh, because you'd expect them to go on uh, to score more goals, but that didn't happen. And these are still early stages of the league. So clubs understand that it's important for them to go away and pick wins. And Gombe United, they're a very stubborn side. On a good day, they can, you know, turn your joy into, into sorrow. So good win, good win. Also, shout out to Remo Stars. Yeah, I think that was what I was trying to champ on. Remo Stars are beating uh, Yemi Adebayo shooting stars by three <laughs> goals to nothing. Uh, punish them, you know. And uh, I, I mean, just, just take that. These, these are the days we all, you know, we all wish for. When you throw jabs at me and I wait for a time so I can give you some left hook. So, uh, good win for Aqua United. Uh, shooting stars, they need to bounce back. Well, well, they do. Um, I mean, I mean, just talking about sh shooting stars. I, I don't follow them as much as I should, but I grew up in a family where, I mean, that was the team everybody talked oh. about. Um, there was the option of stationary stores, but all, all my family members, I, I'm very sure probably some of them who are listening now. I, I hope, you know, all the stories of our going down, coming up, I hope they'll be able to stabilize. But, okay, me quickly, in a minute or two, were there any surprises for you? Um, not much. I mean, as uh, no away win, but away point. But I mean, yet again, Rabi Ali. Um, it, it just looks like I the old war horse. Maybe in the next few years, it would probably all conclude that um, he's the greatest yeah. player to have played in the Nigerian uh, professional or premier, however way you want. I mean, to we should start getting it. our clips ready. We need to do it. He has moved over a lot of years. He's over forty, mm -hmm. and their last game, he scored a ninety-fourth minute winner to give them a one new victory. In their three new victory, he scored a goal, and not just getting a goal. I mean. Is they call him Pele. He's like the, the he has king. the legs. He has the crowd. I've seen. I've been at the Sonia Bacha Stadium before in Kano to watch Kano Pillars play against Plateau United. And after the game, more than about three, four thousand fans follows Rabi Ali to his car. He's such an idol, and he keeps doing it. And I'm wondering, maybe until he leaves the scene, that's when we start learning to celebrate him. I think that's the big win for me. Uh, beyond Plateau United, they've been managing to grind their results this season. It's not been so good for them. But yet again, they're able to pick this particular win. For Remo Stars, there were a lot of hype and expectations on the Southwest Derby between themselves and Shooting Stars. Mm -hmm. But the gulf of class between them was just for everyone to see. They got to Remo. They couldn't find their footings. They couldn't get their balance. Before you knew what was happening, hey, uh, one of them already got the job done, got the three points. I still saw his tweet earlier today, 3.3 win, just so much color around it. See, I mean, you look at the difference between uh, the privately owned clubs and the government sponsored club. You look at the management, you look at Sporting Lagos. I've been at their stadium to see one of their home games. You look at the branding, the packaging, you look at Remo Stars. There's just that, that shift between those two. And every other person, it's not like the other ones are not doing well, but you just look at the fact that when people say you put your money where your mouth is, mm -hmm. that's what we're seeing here. Yeah, it's, it's more than the football, the, 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 the total packing. Mm. All right, uh, let's move on on the show. Let's talk futsal and, and beach soccer on the show. Uh, tonight, the Nigerian Football Federation, the NFF, has pledged to support futsal and beach soccer to return to full team activities in the country and uh, the, they're looking at ways to support, to give it structure so that things can go uh, the way it should go. The NFF President Ibrahim Guso uh, said the Federation will provide inspiration and encouragement to all aspects of the country's football sector to grow and attain some level of sustainability. Uh, and of course, the coordinator of futsal in Nigeria, Samson Dintidani Yusuf, also had a few words. Let's take some reactions. We'll be back for more on Sports Tonight. I think for about four or five years, even at the beach soccer, we are not participating at uh, international tournaments. Uh, I think at that time, the NFL tried to realize that uh, we cannot continue to be participating in an international tournament and global tournaments without really having a proper structure in which we can say uh, we are getting our players 
players or getting or preparing for such kind of tournaments from that uh, I think NLF decided to suspend all participation at international, regional or global tournaments as far as beach soccer is concerned. Beach soccer is a kind of a game that you can play anywhere. You don't need a opusa. You don't need a big stadium. You don't need a big pitch. As you said, uh, you know, it's just a five-a-side game. So at any corridor, you can create a place that people can go there. And then some people even take it in form of exercise. But uh, we want to make it professional. We can still encourage those that will go there to do it for exercise reason. But we are talking about making it professional so that in the nearest future, will also be part of uh, the participation at the global level. As you know, as you said earlier, uh, PIPA is trying to introduce even the Women's uh, Pulsa Tournament, uh, World Cup. So I hope in the nearest future we are going to be part of it. If we are not among the medium, uh, at the media participation uh, of the tournament, let us be part of it very soon. And maybe we'll achieve that with your own contribution. All over the world now, um, futsal is actually big. Um, I, if you can recall, um, the president of FIFA, uh, Gianni Infantino, uh, made recently that um, there's going to be a FIFA, um, there's going to be a FIFA futsal World Cup for women, which is actually big for us here in Nigeria. So, from all my um, places I've been to, uh, Kano, Kaduna the East, North, West, South, I discovered that we have players that can actually play futsal. So why not we take part in it? So, but we believe that the NFF alone can't do it alone. They need partners to come in. Nigeria is such a big market. A lot of people are asking me, why is Nigeria not doing futsal? I said, well, it's not because we're not doing it. It's because Nigeria is engaged with so many uh, national teams. We have the biggest uh, engagement with national teams. We're planning to launch a league next year. Um, it, that's going to be a very big event whereby we invite all the key stakeholders. But before we do that, we need to organize a seminar because we need to let people understand futsal. Futsal and football is different. It's very tactical. It's very skillful. Um, it takes a lot of energy. So we need to educate people, our coaches, our referees. We believe that uh, we have some coaches in Nigeria who have done courses. And we need to bring all those people together to, to, to one room and say, okay, you know what? How can we move this sport forward? All right, that's a lot we can say about this, Steve, but unfortunately, we're, we're, we're pressed for time. Uh, but, I mean, I don't, we'll sound like a broken record. I don't know. Let me allow you to say whatever you want to say, because I could ramble on, even though it's good that we're having this, even though it's good that the NFF is recognizing that more needs to, done, to be done, to put, but even in the coordinator's speech, he just, he, he just said it. We're too focused on national teams, and that's all, that's all we do. Um, you hear me? I've seen the Futsal World Cup. Mm -hmm. I've seen how big it is. It's as big as the FIFA World Cup in their own space. Mm -hmm. uh, for those that don't know, the Futsal is a five-a-side, um, played on a different kind of pitch, more like an indoor thing. Mm -hmm. And um, I've seen the way big, um, you know, companies pumping monies, millions of dollars. Even for beach sport. soccer so as well. Even, I mean, don't let us even talk about the beach soccer, you hear me? The potentials that we have. And it's unfortunate that sometimes we have to pull players from the regular, the league, the regular yeah. league to go play the beach soccer. It's a different rule. It's a different terrain. It's a different atmosphere. But unfortunately, we couldn't even sustain that. Even on the food, sir. It's not a big deal. It's a father's side. And I like the fact that I hope it comes to lights. And they said they want to have a league by next year. Mm -hmm. What that means is that we can sustain it. We can participate at the continental level. We can also qualify for the World Cup. The way we have the FIFA World Cup is the way we have the Futsal World Cup. And there's so much money. I remember the last one. Neymar was all over the place promoting it. It's more like an ambassador yeah. for one of the beverage companies that are sponsoring it. Mm -hmm. And it's that big. Why can't we have it? We continue to limit our options because we think we can achieve success in one particular channel. The super eagles that we've pumped in all of the energy, we've not won the outcome since 2013. I mean, that's 10 years ago. Look at the way the other countries of the world are diversified and look at the fact that, okay, if male football is not giving us the level of success that we want, 
What about female football? What about futsal World Cup? What about big soccer? What about para, uh, para soccer? What about these other, even, other sports? Even in football alone, there are many other... Do you understand, you Yemi? Know? And it's so easy. It's Just so easy, put yeah. the right people at the right place and we have the right results. Uh, hopefully we will. We will do that. All right, like I said, we're pressed for time. I know Austin wants to say three or two. Then, of course, we'll come to your backyard and talk about the Carabao Cup. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts on this one? Then, of course, your thoughts on the Carabao. Hopefully, we'll be able to talk about the Springboks as well. Yeah, I like that futsal is in the conversation again because mm. it will provide more opportunities for a talent who want to, you know, play football. And let's not get it twisted. There's so much technicalities mm -hmm. tied around achieving proper futsal. Because I've been doing a lot of research recently because it's getting very big in the United Kingdom. The way the NFF president talked about it, it made it look like, oh, it's not, it's not futsal, five a side, and you don't need a big pitch. And I don't know. <laughs> it's a lot. You need indoor playing arenas. Mm -hmm. How many do we have in Nigeria? Mm. Uh, when you go to the indoor sports hall, at testing Balogun Stadium. That's where they, they probably will do table tennis, they will do badminton, they will do um, basketball. So much is happening in there. So we need to invest in infrastructure and understand the science of the sport. So coaching is very important. Some students talked about it, but how many persons understand the science of futsal in Nigeria? We've seen the story of beach soccer where you have players who play on grass and play for professional clubs in Nigeria going to play beach <laughs> soccer because they feel, oh, is it not the same football where you run? No. So much is involved. There's a reason why these games, are, why these sports are different. For instance, the five-a-side pitch is different from the futsal mm -hmm. five-a-side pitch. Mm -hmm. Yes, they are both five-a-side, but it's not the same. Five-a-side for regular football, the pitch is 40 by 30 yards. Now, why is that so? It has a wider pitch that challenges defenders to widen their coverage areas. Why for futsal, it's just 40 by 20. So a coach who doesn't even first understand this and is just telling the guy, you're just running and running and running. Nothing is going to, to, to happen. So we should understand the technicalities. I like the fact that we, we want to join the world in doing everything that is happening. Why not? We've got the population, we've got the talent, we've got the markets, but we need the right leadership to drive it. Oh. All right. Uh, so um, let's, let's quickly go through the Carabao Cup, uh, Cup the results, uh, and some of the things currently going on, Austin. Uh, the Carabao Cup, what a story. So much happened uh, yesterday. I, 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 I called it... The upset um, cup, yeah, I'm right, but I don't think we saw much upset uh, yesterday in the Carabao Cup. So let's just run through some of the results from the Carabao Cup. Everyone's still talking about it. I mean, followers of football in the United Kingdom, particularly followers of Manchester United, uh, that's shocking. Was it shocking with Manchester yeah, United these days? Newcastle doing the most out of Manchester United. So quarterfinal fixtures. Uh, I've, I've been done. Chelsea, we now take on Newcastle. Newcastle did a good one over Manchester United. Port Vale will take on Middlesbrough. Uh, Liverpool will go against West Ham. West Ham um, humbled Yemi Adebayo's ass now. <laughs> and then Everton will take on Fulham. That's the you quarterfinal fixtures that's that's for this that's year's uh, <laughs> EFL Cup. Uh, confirmation of it right there for you. Uh, Chelsea will take on uh, Newcastle. Port Vale will take on Middlesbrough. Liverpool will go against uh, West Ham, while Everton will take on Fulham. You know, some are beautiful football in display with the Carabao Cup, but I, 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 I struggle to see how some of these clubs like Port Vale, um, Middlesbrough will stand against these Premier League teams. Well, it is what it is. It's football where anything can happen. West Ham, I think, uh, to an extent, did a good one of us now. Three goals to one. Uh, so not really shocking because that's some... Um, Competition at Arsenal just to give an opportunity for young players to come out of play. But Chelsea uh, needed to just run over our Blackburn and they won that one by two goals to nothing to advance. So, quarterfinal fixtures in the FL Cup, yeah, me. I'm, I know you're not so um, interested in this one. So, it, it's end of the road for Arsenal, it's end of the road for <laughs> Manchester United. So, Chelsea, Newcastle, and even Liverpool uh, can have their eyes fixed on winning the FL Cup, okay, me. Uh, yes, um, Manchester United yet again at Old Trafford. 
And then you just look at how different both teams have gone apart. Remember, uh, Manchester United actually uh, defeated Newcastle to win uh, the Carabao Cup last final season. last season. But look at how how big both of them are. The, beyond, uh, sir, apart from uh, Newcastle returning to the apex of you know club football, which is the Champions League, you look at how big they've got. You look at the kind of massive result they won this season. But Manchester United, they've considered six goals at home in their last two games. Three new defeat against their city rivals, Manchester City, and now three new defeat against Newcastle. In fact, I'm going to be very sincere with you, Yemi. I called that game before the match. I knew it was going to be a win, a very easy win for Newcastle. I went, and funny enough, that was not even the strongest of Newcastle game. They had, you know, players that have struggled to get game time coming to it. They got the job done. But for Manchester United, they are playing this day with so, so, so much like a drastical attitude. It's almost like the players are being forced mm. to play for the club. Yeah. But big, big, uh, big uh, you know, fixtures now. Chelsea against Newcastle, another big fixture, really mouth watching. Liverpool against uh, David Moyes West Ham. See, David Moyes won the uh, UEFA Conference League last season. They've tasted blood. They feel like, hey, we can get the job done. After they lost the clean rise, but they brought in a couple of players. What Prowse is doing an amazing job with that side. The same thing, uh, you know, Madison is doing with Tottenham most part at the moment. So a lot of, you know, interesting features to look out for. The Everton Fulham, it could go either ways. Yeah. It could go either ways. All right. All right. Well, uh, interesting fixtures. That's uh, what I wanted us to just take a look. Quarter final right there. And um, all the teams that crashed out, <laughs> they've been forgotten. <laughs> all right, let's move on now. Our party shot uh, on the show. Uh, Springboks, what, what can I say? A few seconds. You see the crowd in a moment. The president had to travel. Once they got into the final, he knew what the boys could do against their fierce rivals. But you see, the guys got the job done. I can go on and on and on, but as an African, I am very proud of the Springboks. Yeah, I am as well. Um, it's going to have gone either ways. Whoever had won it will have been the most successful club, mm -hmm. uh, you know, country was at the close. Rugby World Cup. So, and um, the Springboks just, they didn't have a very good running into the World Cup, you hear me? Uh, their build-ups to the World Cup, they didn't particularly get going. And, but then, I think they had the energy, they grew into the tournament, very typical of most And having 70% of the guys that won it previously. It, it's a good thing. It's just a form of consistency, continuity. They knew what they had to do, just keep calm. Even during the World Cup, there were games that they really struggled. Their quarterfinals, I think they won by just two, uh, two points. But the moment they got to the finals, it's a familiar terrain. They're not new to that space. They didn't allow the occasion to consume them. And they just simply got... It, it wasn't as easy as this, but hey, when you win, nobody cares how you won. The most important thing is that hey, you've gotten a trophy. All right. When you, when you win, nobody cares. Uh, history only remembers the team. Uh, that one. All right. Uh, Austin, um, a few seconds on the spring box, even as we wrap things up. Yeah, um, fantastic win. Uh, South Africa, congratulations. We're so proud of you. Thanks for, you know, giving Africa maximum respect at the FIFA World Cup, at the FIFA, at the Rugby World Cup. Uh, back to back champions. Record fourth time they're mm -hmm. having the trophy. I'm sure we'll listen to. Uh, the president, uh, talk about the team when we wrap up the show. But this is a good way to, you know, let the world know who we are. We are Africans and we're strong and we're determined and we're champions. That's the show. In London, I'm Austin Okonapa. And in everything you do, remember, keep talking sports. Bye for now. It's not an entertainment show. I wish I could have played that song. We are Africans, but of course, it's a sports show. <laughs> I want to thank you for your time. Thank you, Yemi. Thank uh, you for having me. All right. As we go, uh, we're going to leave you uh, with, um, of course, uh, uh, the, the thoughts of uh, South Africa President Cyril Ramaphosa uh, when he received the Springboks, the victorious Springboks team. That's the show today. We hope that you've enjoyed everything we've been able to do. I'm Yemi Adebaya. We'll see you tomorrow.